Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video. I have a double hop layout today. So part of it is stamp with me. The other, other part is off the board with pineapple papers. So here you can see my Pinterest pin that I was inspired by. I love the mixed media in this. I love the kind of monochromatic with a pop of a color um, and how they did all the layering. So I really wanted to try and recreate that look. Um, I'm also going to try and get some stamping on here, obviously, for a stamp with me. I have some goodies from the In Love, Ar In Love Art Shop. So I really wanted to try and use all of them on this one page because I picked up a bunch of different goodies and I thought using them all together would create a really good look. So I'm starting to create my page with Prima Marketing's um, Rose Quartz collection. I thought this really lent itself to doing one of those cool kind of monochromatic with a pop of a color <laughs> type of page. There's this really pretty um, pink, but it kind of has a hint of purple in it. Um, I thought it would be a really cool way to try and recreate the look of that Pinterest uh, pin that I had. So I'm starting by trimming down this photo and doing a couple of little layers. Um, one of the things I picked up from the In Love Art Shop was this little pack of <laughs> vellum and paper. Um, the paper is really cool in this little 6x6 six six, uh, pack because it's kind of glossy. It almost feels like um, that brochure texture. I just think it looks really cool. It kind of is more shimmery and glossy. Um, but it also has this gold foiled uh, vellum in the collection. <laughs> so I wanted to try and get um, a couple pieces from that pack used up. Um, I'm already trying to figure out ways to use it, but I wanted to get a couple layers down using some scraps from the Rose Quartz collection first. So I'm just playing with all of these kind of white and gray tones, and then I'll pull in some more of the pinky colors. Um, this photo, I actually edited it back in uh, college when I posted it. I turned it black and white, and then I selected Billy and this box of Girl Scout co cookies to still be in color, so it really stood apart from the background. Um, I was just happy I got Girl Scout cookies, and when I was in college, I wasn't a scrapbooker, so I just took it to post, and at the time, I just had Billy in every picture because I didn't really post pictures of myself, so this is just the way I documented stuff, was having Billy in frame with whatever I was actually trying to show off. <laughs> so that's one of those pictures. I was really excited. I love the Samoa's Girl Scout cookies. They're my favorite. Um, and I had gotten my hands on a box of them after not being able to have them for a really long time. Um, so that's all this photo is about. I did decide to ink all my edges in black. I thought that would lend itself to a really cool added texture, especially because a lot of these papers uh, probably would blend together really easily. And uh, inking the edges really help you distinguish all the different uh, corners and edges of all the different papers. <laughs> so you can see how I'm just staggering and stacking these layers around the photo just to kind of create that same symmetrical look um, that was on the Pinterest board. I want a lot of kind of horizontal paper layers up by the photo and then I want to do the same thing that was in the Pinterest board and have a bunch of layered banners coming down in the middle. <clears throat> so for right now I'm just trying to use up some scraps. I'm trying to do start pulling in some of those pinky colors. <laughs> I have this scrap of this world map that has that pinky color, so I thought that would be a cool piece to get a scrap of. Um, I also flipped that back layer over to the floral side because it also has that pinky color in it. I thought that looked better than what I was going to use, which was the uh, B side of that. <laughs> So I'm just going to glue all of this down. You can see I pulled out a couple die cuts. I'm, I'm really trying to figure out way to get a lot of a lot of texture crammed into this layout, but at the same time make it be subtle so that you have to really look <laughs> to see all the different details. Um, here I am pulling in a piece of the vellum. That pack from the, the vellum pack I got from In Love Art Shop had this wood grain vellum, which I thought looked so cool. <laughs> and there's actually a very sim similar wood grain in this collection, so I thought um, it will coordinate really well. So I'm just stacking that on either side of the photo. I think that adds a whole bunch of texture too because obviously you can see the <laughs> floral paper coming through that wood grain. And I think that looks really awesome once it's finally all layered together. Um, so that's one of the things I really wanted to use. I also picked up um, a stencil, uh, embossing folder, some stamps, um, <laughs> and those really cool, it looked like water droplet, almost enamel dots that I used on that wolf pack page. Um, a couple of layouts ago, so I'm really going to try and get all of that on this page. I really wanted to show off those products, <laughs> um, but I thought all of those really kind of lent themselves to doing this really super textured layout. <laughs> so I think at this point, I pretty much have all of the paper layers to go across the top. 
Now I'm trying to infuse it with some texture. I thought about doing these die cuts and then I couldn't decide between the white and the black. And then I decided I would just do my stenciling first. So this is the stencil I got from the In Love Art Shop. I'm just going to spread some Ranger white texture paste through it. And I'm pretty much just going to cover the top third of this page with the texture paste. That way it's just peeking around all of those layers on top of the photo. <laughs> and I like that it's white on white because you can really see the texture, but it's not distracting. And that's what I was really going for <laughs> with this layout. Uh, so you can see, I'm trying to just not waste the product behind where the paper layers and the photo are going to be. Um, so that's why it's kind of in an L shape. <laughs> um, but I'm just trying to make sure wherever you do see that background paper, you can see that texture. So I'm going to finish spreading that. Um, there's a little gap between those two sections I just did that <laughs> I'll kind of... Um, put a corner of the stencil down through the middle to try and, and get it. there you can, there you can see it. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to make sure it went all the way around those layers, so I think that looks really cool. Um, in my mind, I thought I was going to try and do kind of what was in the Pinterest board and have some sort of like color, like maybe that pinky color, um, or do some watercolor stuff around the stencil so the stencil would really pop. Um, but after this dried, I really did like the tone on tone, so I decided to go in a different way with adding <laughs> color. So I have this, um, they're shimmers, I think, creamies, and this color is the pink champagne. Moira sent this to me like a couple years ago in some happy mail, but it's this really beautiful watercolor, but it's very, very light and pastel, and it just adds a hint of color, but it more gives your page a little bit of like this pearlescent shimmer. Um, so I'm adding that subtle pink around uh, the stencil and then now I'm trying to get some water droplets of this color to drip down the page similar to my Pinterest inspiration just so you can see this color kind of dripping down the page behind all the banners that I'm wanting to add. Um, so it's, it's again, it's really subtle, um, but it, it makes a really cool end result. <laughs> and I really like when you do the, all these different layered mixed medias that really have to look at to see. Um, and that, that's one of those products where it just like it adds such a beautiful, subtle detail. And I thought that light pink champagne color went so well with this collection. Um, so I set that off to dry, and then while that's drying, I wanted to start cutting all of my banners that are going to be below these paper layers. So I'm just taking a bunch of scraps I have from the Rose Quartz collection. I'm also going to pull in some chunks of the paper version of the wood grain that came in the In Love Art Shop uh, paper pack, just so I can pull the wood grain that's in that vellum down to the bottom as well, so you can see that chunk there. <laughs> I also matted the photo in that, so it's all, also represented on the top part of the page. But I wanted to pull that wood grain out a little more as well um, because I think that color, that pattern paper adds the most contrast between all of the white and pink. <laughs> just having that hint of a brown that kind of brings it down and makes it a little bit more earthy. So I'm just cutting a bunch of banners. Again, I'm going to ink all of them and then I'll start staggering them up. But I'm really trying to follow my Pinterest inspiration because I just thought that design looked so cool. <laughs> um, there's a lot of texture that, that the original artist added in hers with like thread bundles and she just did a ton of mixed media in hers. And I think, um, I think there was a link in that Pinterest pin to a class where she actually teaches you how to create that original. Um, so I didn't want to do it exactly, but I was really inspired by just the base design <laughs> of these horizontal layers with the photo and the banners trickling down. So that's really what I'm trying to go for. I'm going to just glue them all together here so I can then glue it all to the page once it's dry. <laughs> but I think that looks so cool. I thought that design was just so clever and such a great way to use uh, smaller pieces of paper, 6x6 six six paper pads, scraps. Because uh, I always am appreciative when I find a design that really lends itself to that. <laughs> um, but that watercolor was mostly dry. There were just a few little spots that were still wet. So I just dabbed it with a paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and glue down these paper layers so I can continue. Um, again, I'm trying to use these really cool die cuts. <laughs> um, but after I did my texture paste through the stencil, I really thought that that was really all I needed. Um, so I'm really trying to <laughs> get them on there because my original inspiration had some die cuts coming from these two corners. Um, but in the end, I really like the way my design looked um, with just the stenciling in the background. So I'll leave it. I'm just really trying to make them work because I thought it would be a really cool touch. But <laughs> 
um, the white almost blended in too much with all the white on white mixed media I already had and the black was almost too much of a contrast. So that's why I decided to save those for another layout. But I got all that glued down. Now I need to embellish a little bit. You can see a little baggie there in the upper left hand corner that I have of scraps, ephemera, fussy cut elements from this collection. So I was hoping I could pull in a couple things from that to help embellish. There actually were feathers in the original post design, which made me think of this collection because I knew I already had some fussy cut feathers. So I'm pulling in a few of those I already had. <laughs> this one stripey feather is already lifted up on some foam from when I was going to use it on another page and then I didn't. So I like that that already had a little bit of dimension and I'm just tucking that other feather into the corner on the other side. I really wanted to get more feathers on here, um, but every time I tried to add one more, it just looked like too much. So I'm just going to leave it at those two feathers. <laughs> and then you can see me pulling in the stamps that I got from the In Love Art Shop. Um, I really liked the stamp set because I had a bunch of different arrows and a bunch of different hearts. So I was hoping between the two of those things I could stamp a whole bunch of arrows and hearts on this page. Um, but I'm not quite sure where I'm going to stamp yet, so I'm going to jump first to the embossing folder that I got from them, um, which is just feathers. I thought that would be another <laughs> good element to have on this page since there's already feathers on it. Um, I thought about, uh, I've tried to emboss some, feather, some uh, vellum. But I didn't have a large enough scrap of the vellum <laughs> to go across where I wanted it to. But that is a really cool look. You can see <laughs> if you have vellum in some embossing folders and you haven't been using your embossing folders, if you try and do it on vellum, it gives you a really cool look. Um, so I really wish I had a big enough scrap of the vellum to have used that. <laughs> but I ended up going in with one of the scraps of paper from the collection and just doing it on some pattern paper instead. Uh, which gives you almost more of a subtle look than the vellum did, <laughs> but I think it's a cool touch and I really like that texture, that subtle texture again that that adds. Um, so I'm going to use that scrap to create this horizontal band across the page. I did kind of have a harsh line from where my stenciling ended. Uh, so I wanted to cover that up and extend the horizontal design of the page from edge to edge. So I'm just using this embossed feather <laughs> pattern paper uh, to create that. So you'll see that I'm doing that right now. I'll ink those edges too, but I just wanted to emphasize the horizontal <laughs> stretch of these papers. Um, and that gave me an excuse to use that embossing folder as well. So I think that's a nice little final papery touch. <laughs> and then I really do need to look into stamping. Um, I really loved the arrow that had a heart as the tip because I thought that was just super, super cute. Um, I also wanted to get a bunch of little hearts stamped, but I, I didn't realize when I bought the stamp set or when um, they gave it to me, I didn't have to buy it, but I didn't realize that the <laughs> hearts in the wreath were one piece. I thought they were separate pieces and you could use them independently or together. And I really just wanted to use the heart. Um, now that I think about it, I definitely could have just inked up the whole stamp and then wiped off where the wreath was. Um, but I ended up not using any of the heart stamps because I didn't think about that at the time. Um, but I really thought it'd be cool to add some arrows in here as well, especially that was another inspiration from um, my pen. So. <laughs> Uh, here I go with my stamp, though I'm just rubbing it. These are new stamps, so I'm just rubbing it on the back of my hand uh, so I can prime it for stamping. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which color I want to do. I thought I was going to do gray because I thought it would add a softer touch. Um, since this layout in general has a lot of soft colors, I thought the gray would look really nice. But over the vellum, it just disappeared because this vellum is kind of this... Uh, tanny gray anyways so I did decide to go in with my black archival ink <laughs> I decided that would be better on vellum anyways just because sometimes ink doesn't like to dry on vellum and I was worried that if I did it in a different black ink it would smear so since I was doing black I figured I might as well just use my archival <laughs> ink instead so I switched to black I think that looks really nice and I'm just going to stamp that arrow stamp in a couple spots I think that just looks really sweet <laughs> And then I, um, I decided I wanted to add in some more arrows as well. So I'll end up going in and die cutting some arrows as well from this dark paper just to layer up some arrows too. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of embellishment that really goes into this because there was so much subtle texture already on the page. So other than the feathers and these arrows, I'm going to try and keep it pretty simple. 
Um, but yeah, once I used that In Love Art Shop uh, stamp, I wanted to accentuate that. So um, I think this is a, is this a, I wanted to say this is a diamond press die set, but now I'm not completely sure. Um, I used my diamond press to die cut them, but I don't know if that's what the die actually was from. But I just have a couple of dark arrows here that I'm going to layer up with my stamped version. I like this because it the repetitive nature of having the two arrows kind of accentuates them, but the darker paper arrow also draws your eye to the stamped arrow, <laughs> so you really notice that. I was really nervous about stamping on these layers because I don't have extras if I mess up. Um, so I was really trying to be brave to stamp that way. <laughs> uh, so I'm happy how that turned out. Again, I didn't stamp a lot on this page, but I tried to push myself in the way I stamped and what I stamped on after having done all this work. <laughs> so I was really proud of how that turned out. But I just did a little bit of journaling. It just says fave cookies plus billy cuddles is perfection. And then here are these really cool water droplet enamel dots. I'd mentioned they're not completely clear. Um, they have the like, uh, epoxy or resin I don't I'm not sure I think it might be epoxy um, that's layered on top of silver so it looks more silvery but I thought that was such a cool touch too so here are the close-ups thank you guys so much for watching I'll link everybody for both hops in the description as well as my links for the in love art shop I have a code for 15% off thanks guys bye